Following joint exploration with arthroscopy or an arthrotomy, a skin incision is made parallel to and approximately one centimeter behind the cranial border of the proximal tibia. Cutaneous hemorrhage is controlled and the subcutaneous tissues are incised. The common tendon of insertion of the sartorius, gracilis and semitendinosus is sharply incised at the same level of the skin incision, about one centimeter from the cranial border of the proximal tibia. The tissue plane between the periosteum and overlying fascia is easiest to identify distally and the fascia is elevated then retracted cordially. Care should be taken not to strip the periosteum and the medial collateral ligament. The origin of the popliteus muscle is also elevated from the caudal border of the tibia. Then the joint line is identified with a small gauge hypodermic needle at the level of the intercondylar eminence by walking the needle off the tibial condyle in the cranial aspect of the medial collateral ligament. The patella tendon bursa is exposed at the insertion of the tendon and the bone is scored at the desired distance from the proximal aspect of the tibial tuberosity as determined by preoperative planning. Another marking is created across the distal aspect of the medial collateral ligament at a distance equal to the radius of the saw blade from the intraarticular needle. These markings are connected to delineate the proposed osteotomy site. Appropriateness of the site is confirmed by ensuring the tuberosity is sufficiently wide and the angle between the blade and the caudal tibia matches the preoperative plan. The proximal aspect of the plate is overlaid over the plateau segment to ensure an adequate fit. The osteotomy is initiated with the radial saw contacting the most cranial and caudal aspects of the osteotomy site with oscillations made in a pulsatile manner. The thumb supporting the tibia is positioned under the saw to prevent distal and cranial skidding of the blade. Once the osteotomy is established partially, the osteotomy site is again checked. Small sections of the periosteum are excised at the osteotomy on the proximal and distal segments, and the bone is scored with an osteotome and electrocautery. A second score mark is created on the opposite segment at a distance from the first mark as determined by a TPLO rotation chart and preoperative tibial plateau angle. The distance between the marks is checked. The saw is placed into the osteotomy, then my preference is to have the sagittal plane vertical with the tibia parallel to the floor. The saw is oriented horizontal and perpendicular to the long axis of the tibia. The hand supporting the tibia is positioned so that the index finger is pushing on the fibular head and the thumb is pushing against the medial cortex under the tibia. The osteotomy is completed with judicious blade rotation and lavage. Completion of the osteotomy should be obvious if pressure is applied across the osteotomy with the supporting hand. A threaded pin for rotation is placed cranioproximately angled cordolaterally. Then I like to pre-place the anti-rotation pin in the tuberosity which must be above the patella tendon insertion. The plateau is rotated while maintaining proper tibial alignment until the score marks in the proximal and distal segments are opposing. The anti-rotation pin is driven through the caudal cortex of the plateau segment. Limb alignment is assessed in both flexion and extension and the tibial compression test can also be performed. The rotation pin is removed and the joint line is again identified with a needle. 
Certain plates can be temporarily secured with cushion wires. The plate should be well centered proximally and aligned with the bone distally. Here we are checking the position of the plate relative to the borders of the tibia, both distally and proximally. Screw placement order is not critical, but in general, cortical screws should be placed before locking screws within a bone segment. Here a cortical screw is being placed in the load position to generate osteotomy compression. Locking screws are used in the plateau segment. K wires are removed when at least one to two screws are placed. The cortical screw is tightened. The anti-rotation pin is removed and the remaining screws are placed. After lavage and final check, the fascia is closed. I prefer to start proximally with a cruciate suture. It is important to identify and engage the fascia on both sides of the closure. All knots are buried from this point. The skin and subcutaneous tissues are carefully closed. Intradermal sutures are used in this case. Skin sutures are acceptable, but staples should be avoided. Yeah, I'll go. Um, you learned in uh, Iran? Or? Yeah.